it's a rare opportunity for me to listen to Mr. Azad uh, with his very elaborate and very comprehensive statement. It is also equally a great honor to be uh, sitting in the same podium with Honorable Minister Mr. Nasrul Hamid uh, and the Honorable Secretary. Thank you very much. Thank you for organizing this. Uh, a country's energy consumption has become main index to its affluence and development. Bangladesh achieved SDG goals developing status by implementation of massive expansion in energy supply based primarily on local gas and power generation by local companies. From 5,000 megawatt in 2009 to 26,000 megawatts today, a more than five-fold increase. Regulatory support was provided to achieve this through a Special Power and Energy Act. Today, energy security has become a major concern in the world. Nord Stream 2 attack, sanctions and counter-sanctions backed by high interest rates, supply chain shocks, Volatil volatility has become concerns of the time. We must therefore recast the future ener of energy and power policies and, pl and plans of ours. So to answer your question, <laughs> it's coming over there. It should continue to be a national priority to support energy security, even at additional costs. We have noted with concern the reaction of political and social organizations on a special provisioning of Power and Energy Act, which enabled the country to implement 100% electrification as well as 8% GDP growths. One may consider how developed countries as well as China and others have taken up energy security and the governments provided much larger supports and subsidies for those countries, including our alongside neighbors India. So to be concerned about the special provisioning of power and energy is a misnomer in a country where we have been able through this regulatory framework to provide electricity to 100% of its population. As a way of energy security, Bangladesh needs to expand its own exploration, which Mr. Azad has pointed out. In addition, we need to mine coal. While I was not in favor of coal prior to the last few years, when LNG suppliers and oil suppliers, even coal suppliers, have made obscene amounts of monies without caring for the survival, leave alone of development of poorest, leave alone of the people and the development of poorest of the poor countries. They couldn't bother less. So now for, us, for them to tell us that go green and do not develop your country is again another misnomer that it is appropriate to enhance our own energy output in every sector, gas, coal, and nuclear. A cooperation with neighboring countries such as Bhutan, Nepal, and India is absolutely necessary to utilize their large renewable energy resources such as hydropower, solar, and wind. Our country has negligible potential vis-a-vis -vis untapped abundant availability of hydropower in Bhutan and Nepal. A relationship by which we can receive those electricity into Bangladesh's grid to expand our green electricity should immediately be taken up. While the recent war in Europe and its fallout in energy transfer between countries may discourage Bangladesh, but with its friendship towards all and malice towards none, foreign policy, we must encourage cross-border electricity. At the same time, we must expand our LNG storage and supply sources. Private sector should be brought in and encouraged into the whole value chain, enabling investment in billions of dollars. The encouragement may include investment in upstream liquefaction facilities and LNG storage, as well as LNG carriers in foreign gas producing countries and companies. This would enable us to get equity gas at a relatively lower price, we must keep in mind that Bangladesh will likely be as large an importer of energy as Japan, that is about 20 million metric tons of LNG in the next 10 years. The need of Bangladesh is expanding as its GDP increases. It's a chicken and egg situation, as Mr. Azad had pointed out. Unless we provide en energy to the population, they cannot increase the GDP. This getting equity LNG at a constant reasonable rate requires us to invest in the exporting countries. This model is what other countries requiring imported energy is adopting. 
whether it is Korea, whether it is Japan, whether it is all other countries who request to import, they are going to Australia, they are going to Qatar and investing in the upstream assets. A sea change has happened and is underway. Even yesterday we saw a bank, the 20th largest bank of the United States falling. A sea change has happened and is underway in the global money and capital markets. With interest rates reaching 6% in the USA, Bangladesh's interest rate will not be less than 13% very soon. To factor this high interest rate into development is very, very challenging. The cost of fund or capacity payment or fixed cost, as many of you argue about capacity payment, but that's part of the fixed cost, play a major role in capital intensive energy and power infrastructure. Government, Bangladesh Bank, and the Internal Resources Division required to support the Ministry of Power, Energy and Mineral Resources and us, the energy producers, the private sector, to manage this high cost. A window in Bangladesh Bank for lower interest, long tenure loans, tax incentives, etc., should be provided for capital intensive projects, thus only to nullify the extreme volatility in these markets. It's not for the gain of the private sector or personal companies, per simple companies. It is to nullify so that the, there is a continuous supply of energy in this country. We are seeking that uh, taxations and other incentives be given, not for our benefit, but to keep the cost of electricity and energy at a level which can be purchased by a person with a capacity of $2,800 per year per capita income. The new contractionary policies of all the central banks of the world, including Bangladesh Bank, does not support infra infrastructure building. On this, a focused view of the demand for infrastructure versus contractionary policies require rethinking at the cabinet level. I humbly submit, sir, with being a very small businessman, that this contractionary policy that the central bank is so profoundly talking about, and this need for expansion of infra infrastructure. This must be discussed in the cabinet to find out a mechanism where there is a balance and there is available funds for infrastructure as well. While privatization of downstream assets such as transmission, distribution of electricity, and natural gas and petroleum products is a must, a methodology to privatization is necessary. We often hear that these would be privatized, but we haven't seen a policy by which a long-term view and, and attainment of the funds necessary for privatizing this is possible. Local companies, now I'm talking about champion companies. I mean, if it is often argued against companies like Summit, some, like Beximco, who have supported this discussion, that why are they becoming so big? Local champions from India to Korea, Japan, Governments have supported local companies to grow, thus creating countries' capacity in the private sector. Private sector is the infrastructure of infrastructure. If we do not support private sector and if we say that the private sector is this bad and that bad, it doesn't encourage us as much. Special Power Act should be extended along with additional incentives to local companies to leapfrog our development, which is country's development. The development of the private sector is not singular of that company. That is also of Bangladesh. I'm sure with everyone's support, including FBCCI, the Honorable State Minister over here, Government of Bangladesh and the Honorable Prime Minister, the power and energy sector will enable the golden Bengal, the dream of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Thank you very much.